Hey, welcome back. It's another map drawing night. This is Classic DM. So let's do something a little different. Uh, we've drawn some of the maps we're going to have in a gameplay session, and we'll keep doing that too. But tonight, let's do something else. Uh, if you love 1st Edition, 2nd Edition, 3rd Edition, 4th Edition, 5th Edition, you know, sometimes you got to get an exterior map going. And there's a lot of exterior maps, but there's not a lot of exterior adventures. And, you know, when I was first starting to play as a young kid, 13 years old, 78, 79, 80, the one module that just jumped off the page at me and my friends right after we played Tomb of Horrors was this bad boy right here. This is a reprint version. Um, the original version had a different color cover, which I have an original copy at home. Um, the Hidden Shrine of Tomoashan, Dungeon Module C1. This module was fantastic, and it's got a really interesting map challenge to it. And I want to kind of share with you a way to take an existing module and turn it into something completely different that you own without killing the gameplay of the module. So before we do anything, um, you know, imagine you're at the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico in a Mayan civilization or an Aztec nation. And you know, when you look at these pictures on this module, you think to yourself, yeah, that's kind of the influence of this thing. In fact, there's just look at the back cover. I mean, this is the one that reprints, the back cover. I mean, look at that. You've got a, a ziggurat. It looks like a Mayan ruin in the background. And this was one of the modules that included visual aids. Like this obviously looks like a Mayan calendar and heavily influenced. You know, it's an like Errol Otis drawing. I believe he's passed away now. I'm not sure, though. Um, some of the drawings in here, these Jeff T. pictures, they're, they're brilliantly done. These are done in 79. Some of the map runes with the miniatures, inspiration from Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. There is so much stuff in this module, it's wonderful. Um, Harold Johnson, Jeff R. Leeson, it was originally used as a tournament module a long, long time ago. But what we want to talk about is drawing, right? We're talking about drawing maps. We'll play this module sometime, because these are lower level characters than our Epic 7 that we're using right now. But uh, before we get into the details, let me just read you some of the stuff here um, that kind of gives you an idea of what the stage is before we start drawing something. And... Uh, Let's just, uh, let's do this in a little bit closer for you. All right, so if you look over here on the right panel, right down here, module background, the start. We're going to follow along right here for a minute, okay? We're not going to read too much. So basically it says, the hidden shrine is part of an ancient ruined city of Tomoashan, once the northmost capital of the Olman Empire, which covered much of the southern continent centuries before current history began. Well, if you know your eight-year world of Greyhawk, despite the fact we have our little title bar saying the Glacial Rift, because this is just interim change of pace entertainment. The Olman Empire is way down the south. It's all the jungles and things like that. It's really beautiful, as you would expect, to the south, now the equator. And uh, um, they go on to say that uh, Timoshan is located in the savage lands south of the Olman Islands, southeast of the oh, the Hocus, the Hole of the Sea Princess, and the climate subtropical, very damp, rains nearly every afternoon. If you lived in Wisconsin, I guess that's <laughs> that seems like a big deal, right? If you live in Florida, it's not a big deal. So the players uh, wanting to investigate the city may wish to camp nearby. After one to three hours of searching, they will find a easily defendable glade. You know, they have that kind of stuff in all those first edition modules, basically saying, like, you know, let the players camp somewhere nearby, make it cool, place a safe place for them to return to, and et cetera, et cetera. Let's go up to that next paragraph. Most of the city is toppled and almost completely covered in undergrowth. Intruders into the ruins will discover that the ancient streets, upper right-hand column here, um, now make overgrown valleys between the debris of crumbled buildings. The larger the valleys leads to the central clearing and pyramid, which is the picture you saw on the back cover. In the south side of the clearing is a newly collapsed area, revealing a jagged hole where debris covered slide leading down into player one area one so you know that's basically just saying you got this mayan city or aztec city or whatever you want to call it it's in a tropical region um there's a big hole in the ground a bunch of collapsed ruins boom there you go there you have it right that's all you need to know now let's just take a look at uh let's take a look at this i'm gonna make this bigger here for you so on the inside unlike some of the other dungeons uh this one had this really interesting gatefold type of uh type of a drawing here i'm gonna pull this over so you can see the full thing Let's pull this over. Let's do that like this. Okay. Here we go. All 
So you had this huge map here, right? It's like a big floor plan map. But in details, they're interesting, is this is really just the exterior of the dungeon. And this is a side view to show you these entrances. Now in this original tournament dungeon, there was two ways to get in. One way was to go through some kind of a hole in the ground, which is kind of like a pit or something like that that's collapsed. It's very loose as you get to area one. But they wanted to show you this because there's floor and rooms on top of rooms and lots of things like that going on. So the side view, this section cut here, shows there's an entrance to the top, which is this area over here. This is a temple. It's called a crumbling temple. And then once you get underground, it just stretches for miles and miles and miles all the way, all the way over to here, right? All this stuff here is all more temple. So then you have this huge, beautiful um, map, just of all these asymmetrical and jagged edges, very ceremonial, just like you expect from Egyptian architecture. I mean, I love this room here, 26, one of my all-time favorites. Really well done. So when you go back to the actual module itself, some of the details on that are, uh, are they did some illustrations. So the illustrations, I think, is what made this one of the, one of the more classic modules ever created. Tomb of Horrors, if I, if I recall correctly, is one of the first ones to really... Uh, do this kind of stuff, right? So let me just go drag this over a little bit here, so we can have this in the background, and we'll make some pull some pictures up for you too. There we go. All right. So you go to the dungeon, you get your table description of everything, wandering monsters, all the different rooms. They started doing this technique where they would do these little writings there inside of boxes to kind of what do you read to the players? Show the players illustration three. Show the players illustration four. Um, and then they would make a series of uh, images throughout the whole module. They would blow up some, some of the details in the room like we do. We do this kind of stuff now. We don't do it this kind of dry AutoCAD looking kind of way there. Theirs was manual drafting. They show large enlargements of gridded areas on the top. Today that would be a battle map you had to pay good money for. Charts and tables and the inside cover. And then it would be the illustration book, right, which have all these pictures. So some of them turn on their side. And uh, to give you know, what do you see? It's all first-person perspective. This is before Doom came out, right? So it wasn't even a first-person video game at this point. Just wizardry and maybe Curse of the Azer Bonds, right? So let's talk about the, uh, what would you do to make this a really, really cool place? Well, I think one thing you should do right off the bat is uh, draw some inspiration from something, right? So think to yourself, like, hmm, what could I do that would be really, really cool? Um, you start researching some Mayan ruins and things like that. And so, well, you know what? There's one, and it's one in uh, South America, and it's called Tulum, or Tulum. I'm not sure I pronounce it correctly. I'm not an archaeologist. And this is a beautiful Mayan city that's on the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. I think it's on the southeastern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula. So it has this beach and all these rocks like right out of Riven. If you ever played Riven back in 1997, it's a beautiful adventure game. I actually used to work at Cyan years ago. You know, it looked like this. This water is just magnificent. Caribbean water, dried up old palm, um, palm trees. If you live in Florida, you know what this is like. They're green on the top and they're dried out in the bottom with coconuts in them. Um, a view from a distance. This is a tourist photo. It's like if you look back at this big rocky cliff, you got this big little temple thing here. This is a massive, huge complex. This isn't just this one little stronghold on top of the hill but it's such a beautiful a blending between such a beautiful location and uh ancient ruins and overgrown jungle and it reminds me a lot of some of the level environments in um what was that game divinity the original sin 2 i said let's just make up something that has this theme so instead of just drawing something directly from the hidden shrine of tomoashan let's do something that uh captures this theme so what we'll do and that's what we're going to do. We're going to pull this picture up first. We'll leave this picture up. And let's uh, make that smaller. Put that up here. And let's see what we got behind the scenes here. So we got a little, it's that time of day where it's, the sun's gone down and we don't have much light happening anymore. So let's get our little lights going. And let's get some drawing going, right? And we're also doing an experiment by recording this video as opposed to streaming it because where we happen to be right now, there's only satellite web. We can't stream anything worth a darn. So I'm going to pull this over here a little bit for you. Give you a little shot of the of that room there. And that way I can um, I can keep flipping back and forth between the photographs. In fact, we'll put this down here so you can see a little bit better. Okay, without any delay, what will be the things you got to do? Well, you first you need to design it. Get your, pencil, get your pencil out. Think about the layout. So as always, we like to make sure the north is for you. So whoever's playing the map and, and doing the adventure, you want to make sure north is up. So let's just go ahead and quickly get a, a north arrow going. And we'll usually do that with this little sharp marker. So I'm just going to put this over here in the corner, but right here. So we get a little concentric, a little circle. 
little cross and just fill that in with a little square there and that'll be north so north is going to be like this and so for this location we have to think to ourselves hmm we're going to have a beach line right get our pencil here we're going to lightly do this get our eraser move that off what would be a cool thing to do well we've got some kind of ruin well we could make it on the grid make it simple so if this was a outcropping off the Yucatan Peninsula, let's just lay that out first. Let's say that we want the ruin to pretty much kind of be in this area here. And we want this to be kind of a, a beach and an outcropping that goes off that way. We want this cool temple to sort of happen like this, somewhere like that. And there was some like crazy walls and stuff sticking up. So we just put, we're just going to block out a couple of little blocks here. Let's put a little line here so I know what to do. There's a couple blocks here, and this is kind of cliff edge going around like that, and it's all grass. And this is all beach around here. And we've got a couple spots for some trees. What else do we have in there? Maybe a couple of trees over here. I'll put a circle there for the time being. And uh, this thing has an outer bailey and kind of an inner bailey, so just put another little super rough. Just follow the grid, just use a little five inch grid squares to lay out your design. You can worry about processional detailing and stuff later. So that's kind of a rough little idea. So we're gonna go ahead and just start drawing, man. So the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, let's do this inner bailey. So this is a uh, crumbling walls, right? So I'm gonna make the walls a little sketchy like this. I'm just gonna pull this over. make this look like it didn't make it. If you ever played Elder Scrolls Online, they have a number of ru uh, ru uh, ruins in that game that are really done well that are like this. So these are crumbling rock cliff type things. W architectural walls, not cliffs. So let's do this like this. And that's just enough for the rough walls, the ones that haven't fallen down. And that's probably still wet, so let's draw down here a little bit. Let's just say that there is uh, some kind of steps that go up the middle, kind of like you would see in a Mayan and Aztec thing. So just going to put a simple line here to help me remember to do that. And we have this kind of a ziggurat vibe. Let's make this jump out and change the architecture a little bit. So we're gonna put this like this. I'm gonna zip this over here, make this bump out a little bit. And keep it offset like that. Let's go all the way out to here. Let's go down here like this. Okay, that's pretty loose. We'd have a line here. And let's do some. Uh, let's do a line here, but make it kind of crumbly too. I'm basically just drawing little strips, like, and just stopping. And I'll go back and detail this later. I'm just doing this really rough to get the layout down. So that's kind of the structure of a building, right? So the area below this is probably some kind of a inverted sloping thing, right? Kind of like a ziggurat. So I'm gonna put this here. In fact, let's move this up here and make this as if it's a little crumbled wall didn't really, it used to do something, but now it's just all been swallowed up by the jungle. And we'll put another wall here that no one will know what it used to be. We have to keep the skulls, right? So that's kind of rough, really loose. And so let's get some jagged edges going like this. And then we'll stop here. We'll do a lot of rocks to fill this in. But when I say that, this is kind of like a, a guideline, and we'll just do a series of tumbled, crumbling rocks here. And we're going to do another line here. It's really loose and thin. This is kind of like the shoreline. And then we can start doing our typical jagged edges that we like to do. I'm going to do them from the other side so I don't draw on top of the fresh ink. This is where the cliff is dropping down. And we'll put some rocks that have fallen down, and stuff like that, make it cooler looking. This is that change of elevation technique. A lot of architectural people do this. It's just for presentation sketches. It's not really official topography. Just really loose. You just don't want to make it too straight. You don't want it to be cross hatching. You know, let me give you an example of what you don't want it to be. And that's the fun thing about these kinds of sketches is they're just loose. They're not art. They're loose. So here's how you didn't want to do it, right? You don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. Okay. That's not what you're looking for. You're not looking for a ladder. You're not looking for something like that. I'm gonna turn this background stuff off in the background so you don't process too much. There you go. What you want to do instead is just have angled lines, sometimes close together, sometimes far away, a little organic, make sure it overlaps, okay? 
and then you look at the pattern, like step back and see the, tr the force of the trees and just go through every now and then add a little more density somewhere, a little more angle. So if you were to draw these lines out, this line would go out like this. These would actually be a bunch of X's that never got to meet. See how that's kind of coming out like that? These are really just a bunch of X's. So, so imagine if someone had a bunch of X's standing up in a hay field, whoops, like this, right? And you took the ground and buried them in the ground up to there. That's what it would look like, okay? So you don't want this. This is lame. So that's what this kind of stuff is here. This is kind of cliffs. So see how this is kind of repetitive here? This is a good place to kind of go through and just give another angle. Good angles over here. Could use something wild. Let's get a really wild angle over here. And if you see a point, like here's a little point here, that's a good place to connect something. All right, so we're going to stop with that. I'm going to make these layout wide. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do some trees and vegetation over here later. Now, I kind of made this boo-boo here. But hey, like Jimmy Page, let's make it a guitar solo. So what we're going to do is we're going to add more notes here. <laughs> we're going to add more stone. And we're going to make it overextend for some unknown reason that no one ever could figure out why. Because that's half the fun with architecture that's like this. And we're going to put a crumbling pillar thing here. And we'll put one the other side the same distance away. Like it's some kind of carved Mayan calendar torch holding thing or something. All right, so this is all like that. This is working okay here. We could talk about the stairs. We could talk about this. Let's go ahead and do the rocks. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to just have a series of rocks that have kind of tumbled and created a beach. So if your players maybe could arrive at a little boat here. So say you, let's get some uh, let's get some minis up here to give you a sense of how big everyone is, right? So this is about how big the five inch grid is with two players standing side by side in a ten foot wide area. And if you were fighting, well, I don't know. Let's say you're fighting a bunch of these bad boys. Let's say you're fighting some kind of undead sailors <laughs> or something like that. They would they would look like this, right? So elephant easy would be here. What do you do? Fighting, or if you use counters like me, you know, you'd have a counter like that. They give you a sense how big the combat space really is. So what we want to do is I want to create a path that kind of goes up this way. So I want to create a path that goes up up here that'll be sloping stone like it used to be a set of stairs and I put subtle hints of architecture that used to be down here and I'll have a huge pile of rocks here that just everything just fell down let's go put these kids out of the way all right so let's do that first let's put this uh let, let's do another one of these kind of crumbling funny octagonal edged pillar things and let's do some more jagged little like hand railing walls as if they were once something important to hold like little retaining walls and we'll do one of these like this and then we can fill that in with a very straight if possible notice how i do from the top down top towards me top towards me that's a technique i want to talk about real quick you have to find your own way of drawing a straight line. Let's just do a qu quick example here, okay? I know my hand sometimes in a way. So you got a grid line here behind you, right? So say I want to draw, here's some points. Point, 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 okay? You want to draw straight lines between these points. So what I usually do is start at the top, and then I just try to go all the way down without lifting my hand and I can go about that far and then I just lift my hand and I'll pick it up and I'll come back the rest of the way. Another way to do it would be you may like drawing horizontal lines this way. Now I'm actually going to move my whole arm. I'm going to put it up here so you can see better. So I'm going to draw a line from here to here. I want to do a nice horizontal line. The thing I don't like about this is the angle that I'm viewing the line is way like this and I can't tell how straight the line is because my hand's going to be in the way but you could do that just trust yourself to do a straight line like that um, or you could some people like to uh, do things this way if you hold the pen in your hand and just do a natural motion you end up with this curve like this so you're forcing yourself to do a straight line which is straight down and by holding it that way I'm actually going to turn on the camera this way so you can see better if you hold it this way you could draw away from yourself but as you draw away you're allowing your hand to glide across the surface. So what I like to do is 
pull down towards me. The pulling motion, I think, has more a better sense of control. Of course, my camera's in a bad spot for you to see this. But I'll actually, and if you notice I did that, I'll take the pen, which I may hold like this to write initials or whatever. But when I get ready to do a longer line, I actually shimmy up the pen like this, like I'm doing a baseball bat. So imagine holding a baseball bat, swinging the baseball, knocking it out of the park, right? Choking up on the bat. This is precise drawing. You're squeezing and pinching. All the pressure is compressing on the pen here to hold it really firm. That thumb and these fingers underneath are holding on. You can actually roll in your hand like this, right? But when you're holding it out here, you don't have any control. So you don't have as much control if you just start going like this. Just be like, that's painty, painterly style. But when I'm doing a big line, what I'll do is I'll line it up. And instead of being down here, like I'm going to write letters, because then my hand will only be able to go this far, is I'll choke up to about halfway. And then I'll just go like this. Just do a straight line. And it's okay to just pick it up with the last one left off. You will sometimes get this little angle change, but it's not that big of a deal. Quick fun drawing technique. Hope those are useful. If you like those kinds of details, let me know. I don't, I'm not sure what people... And there's lots of guys who do architectural sketches that are much better than me. I was a young architect for 10 years, and then I got in the video game industry. Never looked back. But uh, I still love the drawing. Drawing is fun. So one last quick detail on the drawing. Straight lines. Notice how we're trying to draw these stairs. You could if you wanted to. You could just go like this and take a straight edge. That's what I used to do. You take a, just take a straight edge, and you could just put this like here and just, and just draft it but you'll find that it becomes so mechanical that it will take away. Look how straight that is. It'll take away from the artisanship. So you may want to turn your hand this way and just do a straight line. It's okay if it's crooked. These guys weren't using survey equipment. Okay, let's put one more step and make it kind of fade off like this. And one last applied step, we just fade it. That's another technique that's good to do is just give yourself a couple dashes to comply a continuation of dirt's filled it over. All right, so we're talking about big rocks. So let's put, remember we did big rocks with the big doors and the glacial rift of the Frost Giant Jarl, where what you do is you're viewing a bunch of rocks from above, and then you've got, so you're going to have big major rocks like this, and then some rocks underneath peeking out, and then make them smaller, as if they've all tumbled down here. So these are going to tumble down like this. They all don't happen to have, have to be boulders. And you put a couple roofs, rocks here. And all you're really doing is, let's do a quick little talk about rocks. <laughs> um, you know, I got paper out of red. Let's just use that paper. So sure, you could draw round rocks. Nothing to do with Texas. They don't look like rocks. You could draw very jaggedy, um, strange rocks like this, but someone might start to see it. Someone start might start to see a shape in it, right? A guy with no arm and plate mail. <laughs> so by keeping it relatively round, but doing some little crenellation details, you kind of help people from saying, "Well, that's not a that's not a person. Doesn't have a funny defined shape like this. It's it's either a <laughs> spilled beer or a splatter on the ground, or it's a rock." So I try to keep them relatively. Uh, Ragged. You'll see in computer games there's sometimes these big, massive, huge rocks like this because you're seeing them from first person, not a floor plan view. That big rock from the side view looks like they look like that, but from the overhead view, it looks like this. It's kind of weird. All right, so anyway, enough on the rocks. Don't forget little rocks. You always have big rocks going to little rocks. Just look at any wiped out area from a hurricane. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So, and where we've got another line, if you're doing layers and doing digitally, you could do layers on top of this, but I don't get to do the luxury of doing that because I'm doing it old school way. So I'm trying to just plan it out a little bit, and then we'll get a couple more rocks through here. So what we're trying to do is create kind of like a tumbling, a, a rock wall that collapses, perhaps with the foundation supporting this stuff over here. All right. So we've got... Um, what, 24 minutes so far? Okay, I'll tell you what, this, this is kind of an experiment too. Let's, we're going to speed things up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed things up here. So let's get a palm tree. So you can basically just do like this. One, two, three, four, five, six circles, just like a starfish. You've got a trunk underneath here. You can just dash that real quick. Just throw some trunk junk down there. And where's my other good markers? Did I put them in the pen already? Is this one? This one? Where's our fine marker? 
Here they are, they're over here, better buried away. Here's our chisel point and our fine liner. I use the fine liner for this. So what you want to do here is start doing a series of fronds that are going big and then taper to something small. And you want to be on both sides. So you're just kind of trying to represent some palm fronds on the, the main spine of these things. And it's okay if these overlap because you want this to look like a palm tree that's hanging out from above. So in this situation, it's okay this overlaps. Okay, you can add a little line if you want to, make it curve. So as you get further and further and further, they get bigger. So they're thicker stalks at the outside, and then they get smaller and smaller as you get to the inside. And it's okay, see how it's overlapping? That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You want it to do that. Just really loose, really quick. You know, if you want to put a little tunnel lines in here, just some hatch marks on here that can apply to something big. And if you want to put another layer below that, like maybe yet another thing like this and start doing that, you may find it starts to look like a tarantula. doesn't look as cool, but maybe one or two underneath there is okay. You can also like take one of these things and put it on the ground. These, they kind of look like that, right? A dead one that fell on the ground. Maybe put a coconut on the ground here. He... So I'm doing single lines for the palm fronds. I'm not doing uh, detailed lines for the palm fronds. Like I'm not drawing blades. I'm not drawing a real palm frond, you know, like that. It's just not that's close enough scale to make that read. There's a rough little tree. We can do a cool drop shadow on that later on the back face of this, make that look neater. All right, so we got some water. Let's get these kids out of the way. Let's do some water. Water is fun. Water is a big sweep, swooping motion. I'm going to take some of these rocks and put a couple rocks out in the water. Like this. And I'm going to put a couple little rocks here. Okay. Remember our inspiration. Our inspiration for that kind of stuff is kind of like this. Those are very dramatic rock formations. I'll we'll put one big dramatic one out here like this and put some little stuff next to it that's underneath it sticking out. Give you that sense of something sticking out. So <clears throat> water is very cool. Use the thinnest line weight you can. And you, what you can do is just do some loose little lines around the rocks as if like waves are, are rippling against it. Remember, it's not a glassy pond. It's not a lake. Okay. Just do this like this. Just something to allude to that this is in water. Just really quick and really loose. And then what you want to do now is you want to start having an organic kind of feeling of swooping line that goes. This is where if you were doing layers, you would do this in layers. I'm not doing it in layers. I'm going to do it in one spell swoop. It's kind of what the, the number, let the pen lightly glance across this. And we're kind of following this S curve. And I'm actually going to add some foam and stuff in here too. So everyone knows this is a beach, right? A sandy little beach. So we're going to, I'm just going to put some curly squiggle bits along here and have it taper out. We're just going to start put some dash lines around here. So I'm going to start increasing the dash the loose overlapping rate. That's another quick technique I want to talk about. It's kind of a tonal lines type of a technique where, oops. So, say you're having a, say you're drawing a, um, a cylinder, right? Here's a cylinder. And you're doing a tonal lines. So, you'd have a line here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here. Closer, 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 closer. And what you're trying to do is create a sense of shadow. If you have multiple line weights, you would you would go like this, right? And if you're a comic book artist, you can do all kinds of subtle details here. That's implying that, you know, this is a light side. Light coming here, casting a shadow. Right? So, so one other thing you can do is you want to create a sense of density by having lines close together. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a lot of lines really close right to the shore, right on top of each other. Just then we'll put some more wave type squiggle things here. 
we put some more <coughs> curly wave type business going on over here. the best water in the world but it will work. I'm going to put a few extra lines on top of the other ones to kind of simulate some wave density. Okay that's good enough for the water. We'll do the rocks later. So we got a beach here right? So we we'll do a little bit of stippling here and let's do kind of a rough little squiggle line here to kind of represent where water came up and came back down. Uh, you don't need to draw footprints to say anything but let's do a little topography line like this kind of implying that this is all sloping. We can even connect it to the bottom of the stairs from earlier. Okay. So we got rocks, pillars, ruins, steps going up, maybe another palm tree here. So I'm gonna put a little I'm gonna do a palm tree that's not so wacky. If you're doing this digitally, you just like drag and drop something and paste it and copy it over a thousand times. But uh, then you're not really drawing now, are you? That's my excuse for not having Photoshop skills. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm also not a very, I'm not a fine artist either. I'm just a s chicken scratcher. I like impressionistic vibe, but I'm not really into spending four hours making a beautiful picture to put in a museum. Nothing against that. So we also put some topography here. Remember our thin topography lines we like to use. Let's have that go around like over here and connect. And this thing's going to have a lot of topography right around the edge of it. Okay stairs. Let's get to some architecture, then we'll come back and do this. Alright, this is not really dark enough here. I'm going to put a little darkness underneath here, a little tunnel lines. Coconut frond on the ground. Debris bits. Okay. This is okay. Does anything look weird here? Oh, okay. So let's go do the stair here. So this stair here, I'm just going to do it with the thinner line weight. And I'm going to just get the lines down first. And then I'm going to throw in some off-center weird stone formation stuff. So it looks kind of like it was uh, created by people. So with any kind of stone work, it's ev the stone work kind of goes like this. Just look at a house or a building or a concrete block building. So here's a stone, here's a row of stone, here's a stone, right? Here's an 8 by 16 piece of concrete, 8 by 16 piece of concrete. The next row down is underneath that, okay? So things are always staggered. So notice how this isn't, that's how the, the weight's being distributed. The weight is pushing on this, so it's just pushing on this. So um, when you're doing these stairs, it's kind of the same thing, but it's not so, not so uh, regular because it's lying on the ground. They're basically like pavers. So what happens is what you want to kind of simulate is that some dude, some ancient Mayan slave, right, put down a paving stone because those things are fitted together without any kind of mortar. You know, turn the corner like this. And this is the stair and the next one goes down. Maybe the same joint in the middle. The next one maybe is a smaller stone or there's a larger stone here. This goes like this. So in essence, you have the stairs that are going like this, right? So you make sure the joints turn the corner. You'll see that in the under levels I used to build, always turn the corner. So you kind of want to keep this irregular. You don't want it to be too uh, rectilinear. Later on, you build a cover up. So, you know, one stone top, 
what you're seeing in the drawing is just these stone tops, okay? So let's go do that. So we're just going to put, put some, some lines here, regular lines, to show different sizes of stone. We only need to think it's some kind of funky German kitchen flooring, though. <laughs> now, another thing you could do if you really wanted to, you could put double lines on here every now and then just to give you a subtle sense of, hey, it's masonry. And, of course, like always, we always talked about little stipple joints. Let's put a little stippling in there. What are we at here for time on this one? 35 minutes? That's not too bad. I'm trying to do this one faster than normal because it's actually an experimental memory usage because I'm not streaming this. So I'm not going to do a lot of detailing. Here's a little piece of paper that fell off. Put another piece over here somewhere. Okay, so that's good there. Now we've got this like crumbly rock stuff. Let's put some junk around here. Crumbled, busted up pieces of stone. Crushed into debris. You could, if you wanted to, go like this. And fill it in, kind of like our dragon layer pool. It just kind of gets harder to fill it in. Just a few illegible, uncontrollable circles and bits. Um, wall. Let's put a joint here. And put a joint here and put some big, heavy joints on this. Huge blocks. I'm actually going to double this up. Huge blocks. Stones. Big stones. Big, heavy, 50 slaves and vines and logs and whips and all kinds of business. This is a, a chamfered, okay? It's like the inside of a coffered ceiling. The Great Pyramids used to have that on it when they were first built. So you have a, if you see, you know, a pyramid at an angle from above, it looks like this, right? Let's just do it with this pen. You probably can't see that with the pencil so here's a great pyramid right typical looks like your four-sided dice you see that from above it looks like this right so th what they did is these things had casing stones on them that's when you see it in reality it, it isn't really doing like that at all and if you go visit the place in reality it's really just a series of ins and outs some parts have wibbled away more than others and this is all jaggedy some pieces are jagged, more jaggedy than others. And some of it still has the casing stones on it. Some of it doesn't. So you'll see that, like, hey, this still has some of the casing stones on it. It has this rectilinear look to it like this. And this part here is just all jagged garbage. Big, heavy stones. So these casing stones would be, like, big, heavy covered like this but you never see that because you see the shape from it see the shape from a from a distance you don't really get a chance to see that so I'm gonna this is casing okay so I'm gonna keep this nice and clean and use really big lines just put a big line in the middle here and I'm just gonna put some horizontal line here and I'm gonna make sure at this chamfer part where it meets at a 45 degree angle they actually meet Let's do it three rows of casing stones. And you can just dash, dash, and impressionistic. Let the mind fill in the gap. Cross the lines, dash it up. Cross over here, dash it up, firm it up again. Dash it. You don't need to see it all. You're just implying something. And you can even put more across here. All right. Dirt, jibbles, bits that fell down here. That's great. Okay, cool. Let's say you said some kind of crazy torch things on top of them. Fire pit bowls or something. I'm not going to draw any skulls or anything. <laughs> okay. Alright, we're almost getting to a point where we're going to go to the back face here. So I'm going to come back down here where these little thin pieces are. I'm going to draw a bunch of extraneous little lines on the ends of them to make them feel dirtier and the edges to feel unsure. 
I don't want the edges to be strong. The extra line weight will help break that up. So every time you see one of these broken things, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make the edge a little dirty with some more lines. And what that's trying to do is kind of imply like, you know, okay, so here's a straight wall, right? Here's a dude standing next to a wall, right? So if you're looking down from above, what does it look like? It looks like that. But if here's the wall, if dude is standing next to the wall and it's a crumbled mess like this, when you look down and here's a dude standing next to it, he stands next to it, looks this way, looks that way, but if you look at it from above, it's going to be messy like this. See? Because you're trying to articulate, trying to articulate this raggedness. So a good way to do that is just do a little quick tone of lines, which just hacks marks right along these things, make it look raggedy. You can do it rough if you want. It's mostly where these pieces are crumbled and collapsed. Kind of want to imply that it's fallen apart. And you'll see that in the original Shrine of Tomoa Shan uh, module as well. In fact, let me pull up their little map again. They have a detailed map in here somewhere. Here it is. This is a person who's a much better artist than me. But see how they're trying to do this crumbly rock? There's a lot. That's a lot of stippling. <laughs> that's hours upon hours of stippling. I'm not going to do that. We're doing this in one hour less. So another thing you can do is go over here to the edges and reinforce your new edge that you created that you didn't want to be totally perfect. And so you come back a little bit and then go back the other way. So this is actually the end now. There's one here. Let's do this one here. All right, that's starting to look cooler. Okay, always take a s notice how I like lean my head back, lean back, take a look at things. Go, ah, it's looking kind of cool. Yeah, it's jaggedy, rough. This is kind of clunky. Doesn't look awesome. Good place for uh, some rocks and stuff to distract the eye from its lack of quality. You've got an extra line here. You can always, like I say, the Jimmy Page guitar solo, man. Just throw it. <laughs> I meant to do that. So some of this stuff is uh, extras everywhere. Nothing against Jimmy Page. He's an awesome guitar player. I wish I could do what he did. I'm going to do some stippling at some of these bigger joints. Remember, it's the galaxy effect far away and then closer and closer and closer as you get towards the joint. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It takes like three seconds to do that. All right. Let's get some more here. It's very funny because when I was a young person learning how to do architectural drawings, I found that it was a fast way to do impressionistic sketches that got a point, an idea across as opposed to a beautiful rendering. Nowadays everyone uses AutoCAD and it's a beautiful rendering. We didn't design anything for here. Let's design something right now on the spot. Dudes come with the processional, they have a flat platform on the top, maybe some kind of astrology thing, they look out over the waves. Where's our picture? Here it is. Yeah. Check this out, man. We're making it different from this one. That's really cool. It's really awesome. So, what would you have here? How about something round? So we just get a loose little circle going round, like that. And let's make it a series of individual stones. What I like to do with a stone tower, if you ever make a round stone tower, is do the cardinal points first, and then start from one end and start gradually working towards the other end, and make the stones cut to fit. So you don't have too many round stones. And don't be afraid to put a little one in there to fill in the gap. But try to keep each individually stone sort of uh, straight. Use like a little keystone every now and to make that work better. Oops, microphone's pretty far away from my face. Sorry about that. There we go. That's a little bit better. How are we doing on time? So, all right, good. 
and we'll just put some put some kind of a weird dash pattern here as if it at some point had some kind of mosaic tile thing going on. This is just me making up random crap to make it look interesting. Okay, so we haven't used our chisel point yet at all on this. Let's do some drop shadows. North, okay. North, summer sun goes up and goes down. Winter sun goes like this. Shadows are always casting this way. Okay, so if it's a daytime map, this beach is to the north, so it's going to get north light. The sun will never be above. The sun will never. Let's just say this st stupid masking tape thing is the sun. This is the s the sun will go up and over and down over the equator. In the s winter, it would go down and around. So in some ways, it's almost like taking one of these lamps. The sun's going to go like this, right? It's never going to go and cast shadows this this direction. So just grab that chisel point and find the biggest thing on the map. How about this? And let's just go ahead and give it a, a little loose drop shadow. This isn't truly rendering shadow work. We're anchoring. We're actually kind of doing site plans. Here's a big one. Make sure it's nice and thick on the chisel point on this one. And you can go over the guy underneath it. And spots like this down here are great for it to get kind of muddy. Just fill the whole thing in with dirt. So we're going to say it's like, hey, it's a 1 in the afternoon, 5 in the afternoon or something. I'm going to put a drop shadow on this. Normally there would be a shadow casting, but I don't want to do all that. I'm just going to say that the shadows are uh, sun lights coming from this direction. We even have a little shot right here. Definitely something along here. Make sure your little shadows bump with your... Uh, it fast, don't do too much detail. It's real loose, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like that, boom, two seconds. Even over here. All right, you could do some bumps if you wanted to make it look like the stairs are uh, dipping in or something, but you know, you're not doing shadow renderings here. Tree now, do that in the back face, it'll be softer. Okay, any gaps anywhere that need to be boosted up? I'm gonna put this shadow line over these rocks. I'm gonna firm this one up. So I'm gonna double up on the uh, north side, especially up here. This is how you would really do shadows if you ever study shadows and light. This is just for the diagram purposes. Forgot about this bad boy. If you want to be a real weirdo, you could do little stuff like that, but whatever. Help someone tell it's just not a. Uh, notice I'm using the fine point here. I'm using the chisel, the flat part, and we could even do it here. Give it some depth. Three cheap pens. Three cheap sharpies walked into a bar. All right, that's pretty good. So we're gonna untape this, do a back face, and we are done. Forty-nine minutes. Okay, we can get this thing done in under an hour. All right. So, what could you do on the back? What's well, gonna make it cooler? Well. Need some kind of black around these trees on the back. I'll tell you why. Remember, and it takes a second to dry, okay? Don't flip it back over and ruin your boards. See how mine's getting kind of buggered up. You could too if you wanted to. You could put a piece under it. So that's giving us a little bit of a shadow. Back face is also a great place to do 
other shadow work if you really, really wanted to. In fact, I see something right now that we skipped. We skipped this. So if you wanted to, you could, uh, you could put too many shadows over where it gets super distracting. So let's do this. Let's do an additional shadow line up here on the south side only on the back face. And it won't be as bold and won't be as pronounced. So it's like mowing the lawn. One row down, but just horizontal lines. One row down. Where else has got a shadow line? Let's do this right here. This one needs one. This needs one. Anything here? Nah. Nope. Now, I'm not going to color these rocks in because they're not pillars. They're not being cut as a section. But what I am going to do, make sure this is dried all the way. Yep. Is I'm going to get my Sharpie. And I'm going to give these guys my middle one, which is just called Fine Twin Tip Fine Point. Holy crap, I had a thing on the end of it. I didn't even know that. <laughs> We're just going to... Uh, Gonna put some stipple rocks on here. These rocks like this, try to make them feel more dirty and organic. Just gonna put some right around the corners. Just put some mess, messy little chipple bits along here. Keep them from feeling like too stiff. Too stiff is not good. Loose and shitty, or it's not worth doing. I'm gonna call this in. This is too too lit up. I'm just gonna put a couple of squiggles along these. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just gonna put a couple of really loose lines. Make this feel dirtier. Okay. This is a rock that's going to have some... That's going to look weird. <laughs> it's confusing with the water now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Do my little sloping technique. I meant to do that. There we go. Just to give it like a crown shape. I think we we're done with this map. The more we mess with it, the more we're ruining it. Okay, I hope you had fun with this episode. It's just a quick little test. Whoops, sorry about that. A quick little fun test going back in time using an original module to give you inspiration for something. Find a cool photograph on the web. You know, take it to town. You could spend another two hours putting cool jibble bits here. You know, and just make up stuff what you want it to be. And I think the thing you get with a, a loose map like this is you say, you know what, I could actually put another tree here. And if I was going to take this map to 11, I'd probably I'd put more vegetation along here because this area is very barren. I'd put more pathway going out that way. I'd put some more vegetation over here. I'd probably put some thing of entrance here and maybe put a fake entrance over here or something. There's all kinds of thing, things you do. i put more interesting things for players to explore over here. You got a player walking up here, they look over here, there's no real reason to go over here. You could put like a plaque on the ground, do a series of four plaques in each corner, all kinds of things, things you do. All right, cool. We're going to stop there and leave it at that. I hope you had fun with this little quick little episode. I'm doing something different with this one. This has really been an experiment. I'm actually just recording this instead of opposed to streaming it since I can't stream. And I'm going to upload it later and see the quality's like. Let me know if you like it. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know. I'll draw anything for you. Just let me know. All right, take care. This is a classic DM with pens. See ya.